So, you've all heard the term Painted Gateway before. I think probably the best way to start is to, to really get into the nuts and bolts of what, what a Pavement Gateway is. A lot of assumptions and misconceptions that, uh, that we all make when we're dealing with a gateway. But when it comes down to it, Gateway is an application service provider that authorizes payments. Okay. We'll authorize payments for e-commerce businesses. It can be any type of uh, retail businesses. We we'll oftentimes use a gateway. Um, all sorts of different types of uh, gateways that uh, are used with different software applications. Uh, it's not just a virtual terminal. It's not just e-commerce. Although that's primarily what we, what, what, what we use it for. One of the big advantages to a payment gateway over any type of resident software is that it does not store any data locally. Okay. All, these, all the PCI talks these days, that's, that's very important. And it, it's something that you want to address with the customers. Because they all know that they're not supposed to have credit card data. So basically, a gateway is what it sounds like. You know, the term gateway in a non-processing arena, I mean, exactly. It's what everything goes through. So it's a centralized point. So when you have a merchant that is running a transaction, okay, they're going to communicate with the gateway, which goes through the processor, okay? And they're going to communicate between the issuing bank and the acquiring bank to process and fund the transaction. There's no direct communication between the merchant and the acquiring bank or the issuing bank. Everyone know what I mean by acquiring bank and issuing bank? Who knows what acquiring bank is? Anybody but Gary. All right, Gary, what's the acquiring bank? Acquiring bank means the U.S. bank. What about an issuing bank? Well, yeah, I mean, anyone that issues the credit card. So, all communication on the transaction goes through the gateway. Okay? When you use a terminal, it's dialing out. It's dialing out to the network. It's dialing out to other banks. It's direct communication to other banks. When you use a gateway, that's not the case. Unless, of course, you're using Elevon's gateway, but even then, it's not communicating with Elevon's processing network, it almost through that centralized gateway. Ready for that question. Um, the gateway will then store all the data, the transaction reports, all that information that purchase may be. Primary uses of gateways. E-commerce, virtual terminal, or any type of software integration. Has anyone set up a gateway that's that served these, these purposes before? So e-commerce is really the most popular use for a payment gateway. If someone is going to be selling products online, they're going to be using you're going to be using a gateway to, to pass the transactions securely. When merchants are doing e-commerce, they're going to integrate a couple of different ways and there's some options. Probably the most popular is, is a full seamless integration. Um, when you go to buy things online, it's, it's Christmas. <coughs> who's, who's bought something online for Christmas? Who did you buy from, Tammy? Uh, Hot Topic? Okay. Do you know if, if they had a full seamless integration? I, I would a company their size, I, I would assume that it did. Really, the way you tell the difference is you'll see the secure page will have their website address. Okay? So it's totally seamless. The look, the look and feel is their website. The other option is to use a buy button or, or even a payment page. They're very similar. Where you'll hit the buy button to add a product, and it will take you to the gateway secure page and use the shared SSL for the gateway. I know we do a lot of things with different nonprofits. 
Uh, oftentimes, they'll have a donate button, and the donate button will take you to a shared payment page using the Gateway's SSL. The beauty of this is that the merchant, if we are a nonprofit, doesn't have that added expense of having their own SSL. Okay. Um, some shopping carts will allow for a payment page integration, and some will not. Some shopping carts will require a seamless integration. So it's, it's something that you want to pay attention to when you're looking at the shopping cart that your customer is using, not only what what gateways it works with, but what type of integration it supports. Yes? VeriSign, meaning they're an SSL provider. Years ago, VeriSign owned a payment gateway. They sold it. So in addition to the e-commerce functionality, a lot of merchants are looking for a way to process transactions by key entering them on their okay. Nice, easy, clean way to do this is a virtual terminal. Okay. The advantages of, of using a virtual terminal is that it gives the merchant the ability to log on to any computer, any <coughs> web browser, and process transactions, review their transaction history, uh, do anything that they need to do without relying on that one computer that they work with the software on. Recently dealing with an issue with a merchant that we have that was using PC charge, had a load of had a data corruption, turned into a huge fiasco. At the same time they upgraded their operating system to an operating system that's not supported by PC charge, and they didn't realize it. Now, PC charge doesn't support the home edition of Windows 7. So, because they went with the software option at the very beginning, and they weren't qualified properly from the beginning, they created this problem down the road. That merchant, with their type of business, should have been using a gateway from the beginning. It's great when you talk to a merchant too, and you say, oh, I wish I knew about this before. Because all of her data was stored locally, she now has to go back and find all of her recurring transactions in the card numbers and re enter and even though it's her computer that had a problem, and her operating system that had a problem, <laughs> it still comes back to us. Because if we had qualified it right from the beginning, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have had this type of issue. So always want to make sure you, you get a good understanding of what the customer needs now and what they might want to grow into down the road. And the reason, guys, the reason why that wasn't qualified correctly the first time the sales rep was scared to say through ten dollars a month per day for the over the life of the account, it's cheaper to buy a software program to do the box. They don't run from price. Don't run from value. But here's a situation where that's the reason why the gateway wasn't offered, because the sales rep in their mind said, 20 bucks or 10 or 15 bucks a month, ooh. Now, in, in, in addition to the ability to process transactions, a lot of the gateways will give recurring billing functionality. It's a, it's a great tool for the right type of business that knows you know, I, I need to charge this customer every month. You know, a landscaper, for example, will need to be able to charge their a monthly service fee. You do that every month. At the same time, that merchant will occasionally have, let's say, a spring cleanup, or they might be given a special project from the customer, and they need to charge another hundred dollars. They can go into the recurring history, grab that card number, and say, "Charge this card another hundred dollars." Done. They don't have cards on file. They don't have to worry about any of that. It's all part part of the program and part of the interface. Some customers will, yeah, they'll have the same customers all the time, or some merchants rather will have the same customers all the time. But they'll charge different dollar amounts. Um, I was working with a, a merchant up in Lincoln, and they deliver to the same businesses on a regular basis. But they don't want to have to go through, you know, cards and have card numbers on them or, or, or anything like that. And they are able to use one of the customer information managers with one of our gateways, which will store the information. So when he wants to run a transaction, he logs in, finds the business, 
employee, good business, may have five different purchasing agents. Each purchasing agent might have their own credit card. Authorizing that information manager, you can actually store three credit card numbers for each of each person, isn't it? So you have incredible flexibility because they might have might be one purchasing agent that covers two different departments that has two different credit cards, and they want to make sure you charge the right card when the mm -hmm. transaction is going through. You see? The customer information managers that we have with our different gateways are extremely flexible, and there's a lot of things that you can do with it. But identifying the customer's need <coughs> and matching it up with the option in the gateway really comes down to you. We're going to get into more of that a little bit later. Um, a wealth of information out there on all of these products. I'm really going to go over the surface, but you can go to any of their websites and see more. We actually had conferences with AuthorizeNet earlier this year where a lot of you were exposed to that before. Yes, Evan. Um, a couple of months ago, I want to call Mr. Nina and uh, Lisa, and it was a U.S. court, and we, we set them up on, originally we set them up on virtual merchant, and, and they had a second account for the ones who were set up to, to, um, to authorize them. They said authorize them to them a much more, uh, the receipt was much more, well, virtual merchants receipts also very customizable, but you can go in and turn different fields on. So it might have just been a situation where they didn't have things turned on. But yeah, you both, both of them give a lot of different options as far as what you want sent out as, as a transaction receipt. We're going to get into the differences in the different gateways in a second. So. Um, So the other functionality that you'll find with the cable gateways is integration into different types of software. <coughs> um, I've had merchants that have had different customer information management systems that control their business, and they will pass data right through authorizing that for transactions. Uh, I have a few merchants that have set up processing through a call center where they run an infomercial. You won't see any infomercials. They go through a call center, and the call center software, all we had to do was give them an API login ID and transaction key, and every order that they ran at the call center went through the merchant's merchant account. The beauty of this is that the call center, the call center employees, did not have access to any of the merchant's information. So it's, a, again, a situation that gives that flexibility, protects the merchant, and lets the transactions go through in real time. Um, other integration, obviously QuickBooks is something that we run into all the time. Uh, you know, that's another, another function of the, uh, the, the processing solutions on the gateways. And then we have other gateway specific applications. Um, with the processing network, they have a JPOS application. It's a Java, a little Java terminal that you can bring up on the screen. You can use swipe transactions, it supports pin based debit, it supports PBT. Uh, it supports um, uh, signature capture. Uh, so if you have a merchant that wants to store signatures on every transaction, it, it does all of that. Uh, they've expanded their application where it has some basic inventory. You can integrate with barcodes. It can have a cash drawer. It can have a receipt printer. So there's, there's things there that if you have an application where a merchant would benefit from that, you know, that's when you want to dive into that a little bit more. Um, Charge Anywhere, they also have an application, Charge Anywhere for Windows, which is very versatile. We actually had uh, just recently moved a, a merchant over to that. Um, and I mentioned that we worked with Joanne, one of her customers who Charge Anywhere. And since we've made them move over to that application, they're very, very happy. And again, it's something that supports the pin base that it supports all that other functionality that the merchant wants it. <coughs> So as far as options for the payment gateways, um, I mean, this, the, the charge anywhere, this might be new to a lot of you guys, and there's going to be some pricing get, gets rolled out to everyone on that in the next week or so. But it's the same the same group that we've been dealing with for, for a while. You know, we're authorizing that, the e-processing network, and the Elevon gateway, the virtual merchant, and the internet security. Authorizing that's the primary gateway we use, particularly in an e-commerce situation. I don't know why we use AuthorizeNet for most e-commerce situations. 
University of Shopping Exactly, exactly. Authorized Net is certified with more shopping carts than any other gateway out there. Um, it's really become a, an industry standard in that sense, which is really a great position for us. We've been an Authorized Net reseller pretty much from the beginning of East Commerce, which is about the beginning of Authorized Net. Um, Authorized Net has been bounced around in their ownership between a variety of different companies over, over the years. Um, I think I've seen it owned by four different companies since I've been here. And CyberSource, which is their parent company, was recently acquired by Visa. So Authorized Net is not going anywhere. If anything else, it's going to get bigger and stronger, which gives us a more, uh, a better competitive advantage against the other gateways in that sense. Um, <coughs> they have a full function API, which is an automatic programming interface. Anyone that was curious what API meant. What that means is that the web developer, in addition to, if they're not using a shopping cart, the web developer you can write the code to pass the data securely to get authorizations on the transactions. You can write the code to take the response back from AuthorizedNet, and then decide what the program on the website is going to do next. Um, that goes for not just regular transactions, but it also goes along with recurring billing, customer information manager, any other functionality, all components can be accessed through the API with AuthorizedNet. That's one of the advantages, again, of AuthorizedNet over the other gateways. We have a variety of customers as well that are using this, and they want to say, this group of people over here, they're my bean counters. I don't want them to run transactions, but they can look at reports. This group here, they can run sales, but I only want refunds done by this country. So you can set up a login for each person and control what they can see, what they can't see, what they can do, and what they can't do. Um, merchants that have had concerns about those things, once you bring that functionality to light, they really enjoy it because a lot of customers are really concerned, particularly with refunds, that they're going to they're get run by people that aren't authorized. You guys, who here was not on the conference call with authorized that a few months ago? Good. Um, we had a conference call a few months ago and we really dove into the automatic recurring billing and the customer information manager. Um, so a lot of people here have a good understanding on that. We'll find some time in the next week or so to, to go over it. But it's pretty, pretty much the, the, the newer people that were involved in that. But basically, the recurring billing, again, I mentioned that a second ago, gives the ability to run a subscription to, to run a repeated repetitive charges. Uh, and the customer information manager will allow a merchant to build a customer profile and then access the information. I had mentioned the, the API with the customer information manager. You know how a website remembers your credit card number, you log in and you go back and it says, you want to use this credit card or this credit card? Because of this. Because they have the customer information manager. Authorizing that is storing that information. And the API is storing a reference number to who you are based on your login. It doesn't actually keep your card number. Uh, you'll see that term, uh, term tokenization. And that's what that's referred to. It gives a token for your card number. So when the shopping cart passes that information to authorize that, it then correlates it to your card number that's on file with the customer information system. So um, I can't remember who I was talking with, but there was someone just the other day that was asking about this type of functionality for one of the customers. Uh, E-processing network is, is one, one, probably our second most popular gateway. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, e-processing network is that it gives some very good flexibility where we can have a merchant that is doing different things with their business, much easier than we could do with the other gateways. Um, so you have the ability to have a virtual terminal, and yeah, you can put a card reader on it, even though it's an e-commerce account. If you're going to be doing it a lot, we should have two different merchant accounts. But if you have a person that goes to one of them here, and they're set up on EPN, they can have the ability to put a card reader on there and it will work. With authorized that, it won't work. So 
it's one of the things you want to pay attention to in your sales process as far as what, what their exact needs are uh, for, for processing uh, the transactions. They also have a, a full API um, <coughs> to do to do the API. It's a little it gets a little different once you get to the recurring billing, but the recurring billing with EPN, if, you, if you're doing the EPN internet, it includes recurring billing from the interface. So by that it means you're going to enter in a subscription manually. If you need to do recurring billing through the API, then there's added charges. To that. And that's it's all on your price sheets. Uh, but most recurring billing that, that we do as a company is not through the API. If you have a customer that is looking to do that, that's where you want to get involved with their web developer and find out what the web developer is used before. Um, most of the time, they've used AuthorizeNet, so they're going to want to use AuthorizeNet again. Last thing a merchant's going to want to do is pay a web developer to learn how to use a new gate network. Um, the buy buttons, again, you guys have the basic understanding of the buy buttons. QuickBooks integration, again, Pro, Premier, Enterprise. Matt, what versions of Quick QuickBooks can we work with? No POS. No POS, no online. I, I seriously get four calls a week. I'm probably only exaggerating a little bit. But again, it's, it's something you want to just bear in mind. If you see Pro, Premier, or Enterprise, it's a go. I mean, that's, that's really what you want. There's about three or four different versions of Enterprise. But when you see Enterprise, it's a good thing. That's, that's what we're looking for. That's what you want to have. Um, from there, just know that we can do it. And remember, when you're pricing out the plugins for QuickBooks, that fee, which I can't remember if it's 65 or 75, is per station. So if they've got QuickBooks on three computers, you need to get three plugins. Okay? Now, in addition to the basic functions of the gateway, <coughs> EPN has some other modules. I mentioned JPods a second ago. So remember, there's an extra fee involved in that. They have what's called the EPN cart. Uh, who's done? Who's done any setups for a merchant with buy buttons before? Okay. How many products did they sell? Donations. Yeah. Donations. You just buy small like eagles. Right. So you just do like one widget, two widgets, three widgets, and you've got three buy buttons. process in real time. Um, usually you need to identify a price with the buy button. Right, you can set down price of 10,000. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It, seems, it seems like there's a huge margin for error when someone could put in a wrong price and all of a sudden they get charged a million dollars. If it goes through, it's good. Uh, well, no, it's not actually. The merchant is still paying the processing fees on even if they refund it. Uh, the drawback to most buy buttons is you can buy one thing. Okay. If you go to ca cash out or radio chat, what do they ask you? You want batteries with that? They always want you to buy more than one thing. No different in the in e-commerce e world. It's always better for a business when someone can buy more than one thing. And what the EPN cart does is it expands the basic buy buttons to allow for a merchant to sell more than one product to a customer. Okay. Again, there's all sorts of information on, on, on their site. Uh, EPN actually has their own YouTube channel. I don't know if any of you are YouTube people, but uh, they have a YouTube channel that has all sorts of information on their different product lines. And uh, it's certainly worth the time if you're going to be looking at merchants that are doing buy buttons to take a look at that information. Um, with all of the gateways, there's a huge wealth of information that's out there. And if you're going to be approaching merchants on, on these products, it's definitely a good idea to take a look. You put in e-processing network? That's it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Steve doesn't read my emails. You just know this? 
We're going to do that slide later. <laughs> virtual merchant is it's, it's an Elevon product, so any, any merchant that's quoted on Elevon, this is, a, this is a good solution for. And it goes back to what I was talking about before as well, about virtual merchant mobile. Merchant will have support available during times that they will not have with the other gateways. So if you have a retail merchant that wants to process on a gateway, and you're concerned about them getting support, virtual merchant is the way to go. So if they have a problem and EPN or authorized net is not open during those hours, they'll they want to use virtual merchant so they can get support anytime they want. Supports retail, supports e-commerce, supports photo, uh, will support a retail environment, it will support EBT, it will support pin based data, it will support uh well, it will support Elevon's gift card program uh, Again, is it virtual merchant or even secure that doesn't uh, do a hosting you know, one with those that doesn't support them not having this itself? No, they both are. Oh, they both support yeah. Uh, one of one of the f advantages to virtual merchant is that part of the program comes with recurring billing, so it's a great solution when you have a merchant that wants recurring billing. It's a great solution to give them virtual merchant because there's no added charge. Um, you have a merchant that's doing more than more than 250 transactions. Again, you guys remember your pricing. That's where the threshold is with all of the other gateways where it starts to add fees on. But with Virtual Merchant and with Internet Secure, there's no additional provider fees. So we just have our, our, our base cost per month with no extra provider fees. So any any larger merchant that you can get on here, you can get a price advantage over someone else that's offering authorized that or any other gateway that's out there. The system that they have, again, just like authorized net, it does have the commission-based system where you can create separate logins for all of their employees. Um, all the virtual merchants reporting on this sense is actually a little bit better. Uh, authorized Net's system does not allow you to see who ran, well, what a report on who ran what transactions while virtual merchant does. Internet Secure, again, this is an Elevon product. Internet Secure does not support retail transactions. That's really the, the, the big difference between the two. It's a big parallel product line at, at Elevon, and my suspicion is that eventually there's gonna be one gateway from Elevon. <coughs> but now we have two. The support that Internet Secure gives a merchant, particularly for their buy buttons, is extremely good. Um, I've, I've had some, some merchants that I've boarded there that they've had great experiences in, in setting up the uh, gateway and the buy buttons through there. And because this is an Elevon product, you can submit an application on Internet Secure, you can be using buy buttons, without, without the website being on the internet. They can have nothing online. And we can submit this, Elevon will approve it based on the product type, and then Internet Secure, the traditional approval department, and the merchant will work together. So it's a little bit different in that sense, so we're not chasing around a condition. Because Internet Secure is part of Elevon, they handle all of that. They also will support recurring billing, supports customer information manager, all at no additional charge. So virtual merchant <coughs> will give will give the recurring billing, and Internet Secure gives both the recurring billing and a customer information manager. Yes, sir. What would be the application of their own website that it uses this, you know, to sell people like cell sites like eBay? Or, you, know. um, you lost me there. You said they don't have to have a website to utilize this. No, no. Unit. I was saying to submit the application, oh, you don't have to see the website. Right. But any any modal merchant, we could we can use the virtual terminal and key enter transactions with Internet Secure. For a Bodo merchant? Nope, SSLs are only tied to websites. Yes? So, like EPN, uh, virtual, uh, internet only, we 
I, I ran into recently, I had a merchant that uh, needed to run some foreign currencies where he's basically charging, they're charging people in British pounds, and the merchant gets paid, and the merchant pays the conversion. Okay? Normally, normally a cardholder pays conversion, but they need, the merchant I was working on had to fulfill a contractual obligation to only charge 50 pounds to these people. No, um, out of all the gateways that we have available, this is the only one that I was able to find. Um, no. The merchant? No. It's a uh, cryogenic stuff. I went there, they didn't have 10 million stuff. So, I, I, I mentioned Charge Anywhere a little earlier as well. It, um, they have some buy buttons. It's not really your strong suit. There's some functionality there. Again, it's, it's expensive. Uh, it's got some, some good QuickBooks integration. Actually, it does some things with QuickBooks that EPM does not. Um, particularly when you're dealing with how the shared folder, the shared file gets, gets networked. In some cases, I, I gotta change the people over this one. But it's, if they're using more than, more than three company files within QuickBooks on more than three stations, but I think only two people have brought that to me in the past year and a half. So it's not, it's not anything that happens very often. Again, same versions. What version is it? Does QuickBooks integrate with? Uh, 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 several versions of it. Strongest suit that, that Charge Anywhere has is the reporting. But again, expensive. So you have a merchant where data is important, Charge Anywhere is a viable solution. But you need to not be in a situation where you're going at them with press. Because that's not what, what's going to win you the business. Again, permission based system, multiple logins, real control for a merchant what their employees can do, what their employees can say. You guys ever seen this before? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we bring up this form. People do a great job and submit them with all their applications for about two weeks, and then people stop. Some people. I'm going to be there for a second. Some people stop. <laughs> this isn't anything that a merchant ever needs to see. When you submit an application, you take this form, you put in everything you have. Okay? The basics are real easy. You know, sometimes we got to call somebody that's not the business owner to set it up. You want to give Carolyn that information. You want to give Tony that information. You want the setup process to go as smooth as possible so the account can get boarded quickly. Why is that important? Why is that important to you? Yeah. That's how you get paid. And you get set up. So that's important that everything goes smoothly and everything goes quickly. And really, where that starts is the information that is gathered gathered by you. There's different sections here if you're doing a gateway or if you're doing software. Put in as much information as you have. If you don't know, <laughs> put a little note in there, explain that you're not sure. Um, you know, if you know what, what the cost is going to be to reprogram the system, put it in there. If you've talked to the merchant about them paying it or splitting it or us paying it, make sure you put that information on there. Uh, there's nothing worse than when tech comes to us and says, we're trying to board this merchant, it's going to cost us $500. Well, why wasn't that brought up at the time of signing the account? You know, we probably would have approved it then, but we might not have gone quite as low on the pricing. So, and it's one of the challenges that we have here is, 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 is doing that because 
we don't mind losing money for a short period of time to bring these accounts on. But when we're not going to make money for a year, that's not good for anybody. Do you have any, anything to add to that, Chuck? Again, exactly. it's just about qualifying the customer, knowing what you're up against. The last thing we do is pull rates. It's the very, very last thing. You need to know exactly what's going on with all of the accounts, what, what situation you're in, and then that helps us because, if, as Ray said, if we have to, if there's any cost of acquisition there, then you know, we might not be at 25. <coughs> Maybe we're at 29 or 30. Okay, again, it's not always about the race to the bottom. And uh, you know, we have to get out of that habit. Okay. Um, the next section there is for, for gateways. You know, if, if you know, if, if you know they need recurring billing, you want to check off recurring billing. One of the reasons that's a great idea is I know when I go to sign off on an application, it says authorized at, and recurring billing is checked off, but there's no price there for it. It's much easier to solve that problem then and there, and then later on. And the technicians are coming upstairs and saying, this rep did this. What are we going to do? Well, any speed bump along the way isn't good for any of us. We want things to go smoothly. A lot, a lot of the things that come up will come up because of <coughs> bad information on, on the paperwork. Because we all get there, we're in front of the customer, we got them to sign the deal, great! Let me get out of here! Let's go! Hang out, slow down. <laughs> Signing the deal is part of it, it's not all of it. You want to get complete information to make sure everything goes smoothly. Because when it comes down to it, and I call them later, then they say, that's not what Grace said, or that's not what Chris said. And I need to somehow say, unfortunately, Chris, Chris was mistaken, and we need to do A, B, and C to fix this problem. And I don't like doing that. It doesn't make Chris look very good. I feel you're thick and thick enough skin where I can say that, but I'm getting upset with <laughs> you know, I was worried about hurting somebody. Yeah, you want to Now, there is also a section on the bottom here for wireless terminals. The software setup sheet is helpful for wireless terminals. We would like to have it on wireless terminals. We don't require it on wireless terminals. For gateways, the software, the POS is required. But yeah, oftentimes, you know, we'll get the application in, we have to sign off on, it won't have it. I'm not gonna not sign off on the application, I'm not gonna slow the process down, but I'll pick up the phone and say, Chris, I've got this application, there's no software sub sheet, I want to submit it, get that in. And when it comes down to it, you get it in that day, the next day, great. But then when Carolyn comes to me and says, you signed off on this, and there's no software sub sheet. And she does, I'll say, <laughs> but it's, it's very important to get quality information here, particularly this section here. Um, a lot of times, they'll be downstairs, they'll see the owner name, they'll see the one contact name of the application, they'll call that person five times. That's the owner. He doesn't, he's never at the store. He might be getting messages, he might not be getting messages. He might have told them, well, talk to someone in my office about it. And we can never connect because, again, yeah, we're not getting quality information. And it doesn't let, make any of us look good when we're chasing our tails to try to get this thing set up. So it's very important that we get good information on this form on every account that has software, POS, or a gateway. Anyone have any, any questions on the on the gateway products that we've gone over? How they how they may be used, identifying customers.